So let's look at flow triggers individual. So these are individual flow triggers. There's group flow triggers and individual flow triggers. A group flow trigger might be like when I was at Burning Man and we were all felt like we were in one symbiotic unit all dancing together to this DJ and it's dum, -da -dum -da -da, everybody's flowing together. And these are the triggers that help put you into a flow state and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at these in terms of let's say anything you might do and ultimately flirting and approaching women. Novelty, complexity, unpredictability, risk, passion, clear goals, immediate feedback, challenge, skill, balance, and creativity. So he's, he says these are the things that'll pop you into flow state on an individual level. Now, when I read this, I immediately resisted it. Why did I resist it? Why do you think I resisted it? This shit to me looks like it's gonna put me into my fucking head, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying there's not value in it. If I'm out there and I hit a flow state and I have back, back country snowboarding through trees, right? There's, is there novelty? Is there complexity? Is there unpredictability? Was there risk? Was there passion? Was there a clear goal? Was there immediate feedback? Yeah, hitting a fucking tree is immediate feedback. <laughs> um, autonomy, uh, challenge, skill, balance. You know, is, you, is the challenge and is it, is it? You know, it's it's a balance between your challenge and your skill level. You got to have the right balance. Otherwise, if you if the challenge is way better, way way too hard for your skill level, you know, you're out or vice versa. If the skill level is uh, way above the challenge, you're not gonna probably pop in. But I disagree with that too. Uh, and the reason that is, is if I'm cruising down a mountain on my snowboard or skis, and the challenge isn't very high, but I just start surrendering to uh, um, the flow, like carving and flowing, and I just kind of go into the now, I'm right in flow state. So it just, for some people, they need a lot of challenge to enter. I think for other people that are just used to meditating and surrendering, they don't need as much challenge. I mean, I can walk down the street and just drop in sometimes. Okay? And creativity. Now, what's nice about this list is I can look back at it after I've done something. Like, I can, I can and then say, well, if I had trouble getting into flow, what was missing? afterwards and say okay so maybe i'll up that the next time let's say i go out to socializing one night and i go flirting and i had trouble getting the flow and i can say well was there novelty complexity you know what, what was missing and maybe it's none of those maybe it's some of those uh, maybe i mean it could be as simple as i got negative feedback right away which put me into a negative feedback loop so i don't know where that would even fit on here to be honest uh, but all, everything is there, novelty, complexity, to go into flow state, but it doesn't mean that I did, okay? So, um, so we're gonna talk about, we're gonna take a look at that, but, but to me, this is still a good list to have to look at what you're doing. All this, to me, equals what? If each one of these has an aspect of tension or vulnerability to it, doesn't it? Is that, you know, novelty is like moving in a new way. It's exploring the unknown. There's tension, there's vulnerability in, in moving in a new way. I could get embarrassed, I could fall down, I could get hurt. Complexity, right? Unpredictability, risk, passion, clear goals. Uh, like that's like focused right into the tension. Immediate feedback, you know, we're letting that feedback in without taking it personal, that's huge. You gotta let the feedback in completely and let it flow through your body and not, not say, oh, I, I get that, I understand that, I, I know how that works. Um, autonomy. You know, uh, the ability to, in my opinion, and when I look at that, is to be able to, you know, do, can I do it on my own? Do I constantly, do I need to be in, under complete, can I explore this behavior on my own, right? But some of this to me kind of all fits together, like novelty, complexity, autonomy. So I just have a different view on this than other people do. Challenge, skill, balance. Was I in an environment where I felt challenged? Was I in an environment where I could work my skill set? You know, when I went out to flirt that night. Um, was there a good balance of ratio between the two? Creativity. Uh, but if I look at all this, is there tension in all of these? Is there vulnerability in all of these? To be creative, is there vulnerability? Yes. Uh, to deal with challenge has to do with tension, right? Autonomy has to do with uh, tension and possibly vulnerability. Oh shit, nobody's gonna tell me what to do. I gotta do this on my own. Immediate feedback, receiving the tension and the vulnerability of that. Clear goal, intention, attention. This could be vulnerability or tension. This is definitely uh, tension and possibly vulnerability. They're, 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 the tension and vulnerability are really two sides of the same coin. They're polarity, they're the same thing. So all of this works together within that. So I like to simplify it down to that a little bit. 
And then if you really want to go back and look at what's going on with you, you can look at this and get a better idea. Uh, now I want to quickly write down the uh, flow triggers for group. So, so you guys can see the whole thing and see what, see what he graphed out. Would a group be defined as two people? That's a good question. To me, I feel like it's three different flow I would say yes if the two of you are in flow together, like you're feeling each other. That's the key. Is, is there multiple people flowing together? Like am I dancing with a girl, uh, like a, a, a couple's dancing, and we're feeling each other, moving off each other? That's how I would look at it. But I'm not a, this is a, this is a different way than I look at it, so I'm kind of showing it to you guys from his perspective. Complete concentration. And just ask yourself, in these, where's the tension, where's the vulnerability? Uh, shared goals, shared risk. So if we're dancing together, is there a shared goal? Is there shared risk? Um, he likes to talk about yes and, and this is, a, I actually think is very important, and I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, that's from the improv, yes and, by the way. Uh, close listening, autonomy, blending egos, familiarity. I screwed that up, didn't I? Equal participation and open communication. Now, how might I use this? Let's say I, I have a concert and I'm a DJ. I might go through this after each one of my concerts and say, how much of this did I offer to people within the, uh, as the DJ to the group? Did I, did I give them, uh, did I, did I create a, a contained environment where they could have, they could all concentrate on, on the music and the dancing and they, and they could all, you know, be together? Did they have, do we have a shared goal in mind of surrender? And did we have a shared risk in mind, being vulnerable, dancing, jumping up and down, flowing? Was everybody agreeing to the environment? Yes, and, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, close listening, which is gonna be a very vulnerable thing. We're feeling each other, that's letting the energy in. Um, autonomy, could somebody walk away if they wanted, right? Could they dance in their own way or to, and still be part of the group? It's, it's different from, from somebody else. Was there a sense of control? Well, yeah, they're, they all had a sense of control within the environment. The environment was controlled in a sense. And again, that goes back to the container. Blending of egos, uh, familiarity, you can see it's all there. But to me, again, there's a lot of overlap here. Um, yes and is really interesting because how do we get, a lot of people get addicted to improv, right? When they go out to do improv, they want to do more improv and they really have a lot of fun with it. You get a big group of 10 people together and they'll, they'll create a whole skit together. And they start, it's fun, right? And it's all in the moment. They're all just making it up as they go. This, is, this moves you into kind of a flow state. How do they do it? What's the, what's the key element? And the key element is yes and. And this is one of the things that is so powerful in your thinking or your mindset when you're moving into flow state. And I do agree with that. It's instead of saying no to something, you say yes to something and you add more to it no matter what the other person says. This is something they do in improv. So when they say, oh, I see a purple, uh, a purple elephant uh, uh, named Bernie. No, there's just, I just, check out my new purple elephant named Bernie. He's fucking awesome, isn't he? You, as one of the 10, if it's your job to come up and start talking, your job is never to say no to that. You'll kill it. You kill the energy immediately. You say yes. Yes, I see Bernie. Bernie's fucking cool. You know what? I'm going to paint Bernie gold. I think Bernie gold is much better. I think he's much happier with the color gold. You see, you said yes to it and you added more to it. And then the next person adds more and the energy keeps flowing and it, keeps a, it starts to build a flow state because we're all building off each other, which also validates each other. And this is one of, the, uh, one of the things you can use when you're socializing, just use the yes and mindset. It's so powerful in socializing. You can even say yes and then change the topic and move it in a new direction. You can even say yes to people that are trying to insult you or attack you or guys that are trying to be a dick to you or women that are trying to be mean to you. The, that principle is so powerful. So if a woman comes up to you and says something like, you know, oh, why are you bothering my friend? Instead of saying, oh, no, no, I'm not bothering your friend, which you feel that drop of energy, you say, yeah, I'm super annoying. I'm glad you noticed. Man, you're a good friend. Do you see how you just sank with the resistance? I say, I wish I had a friend like you. And then, um, yeah, I'm such a loner, whatever. And then she, it takes away her power. Do you see what I'm talking about? So that yes and makes everybody smile. It makes them open, open up. And we used to practice yes ands a lot back in the day. Uh, we just practice saying stuff to each other and say yes-anding each other back and forth and trying to get each other and see if we can get the other person to fuck up their yes-and. 
And it's a lot of fun because it makes you think on the fly. It teaches you to flow. It teaches you to go towards a flow state. Because to be good at it, you can't be thinking. You have to be thinking with your gut brain. You have to be feeling. So thinking on the fly isn't even really, it's, that's even not correct, okay? And then what happens is when the flow starts to happen, I think this one's very important here, you start to create, and this is what's so important about flirting, this one. You start to get a blending of the ego. Your egos start to blend together. You start to get each other, right? From the SN. That also forces close listening. Do you see what I mean? And then you, together you have shared risk and all just kind of clicks on. I think this one is, it really starts to facilitate a lot of this. It creates familiarity as you get to know each other. Everything starts to build off of that. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So blending of egos would be like uh, letting go of rigid beliefs to kind of adopt the other person's belief. I, I'm a little confused though what a blended ego would be. It's like, I think your ego starts to relate to each other. They start to speak a common language. That's how I see it. You know, there's a sense that me and you think the same. Okay. So we're, so our ego, so we're becoming, we're, we're opening up to each other and being vulnerable. To, so our egos are becoming vulnerable to each other would be another way to look at it. Okay. And feeling safe together um, versus fighting each other. So these were the, these are the 20 things that this guy identified that put that in his mind that can put us into flow state. Now, how can we make this easier? Because it is kind of a complex idea and it's a lot to think about, right? And there's nothing wrong with using these things. Uh, I would say in hindsight, you go out and you, you do a bunch of flirting in a bar and then you go back and you say, especially this group flow trigger, and kind of run through and say, wow, I didn't hit flow state tonight, or even a little flow state. Was any of this missing? And then say, next time we'll fix that. I don't believe in going, if you go out right before you go into the bar and you say, okay, I need to make sure I have all these in place, it's gonna put you in your head. And that's the antithesis of flow states. So you don't wanna do that. Um, one of my friends once said that when you're out flirting, if you really wanna be good with women, and this was Jason, the guy I talked about earlier, uh, Jason Savage, he said, you don't want to be thinking. That's the worst time to think. He says, you just go. You set an intention and you go. I don't think he said set an intention, but that's how I look at it. And you go, like he did, hey, come here, come here, come here. And you just start going and you go into flow. After you're done, the end of the night, the next day, you can analyze what you did and say, what could I do better next time? Take note of it, write it down, put it in your journal. But when it's game time, you don't think. That's why at Fearless, we often say, guys, this is really important. There's practice time and there's game time. Practice time and game time. Practice time. I'm going out today and I'm going to talk to 100 people, not necessarily beautiful women, everybody. And I'm going to work on eye contact or I'm going to work on opening my heart to each person. I'm going to work on, I'm going to set one thing and I'm going to work for the next five interactions. I'm going to work on that one thing. Next 10 interactions, I'm going to work on this other thing. I'm just looking for these little one percenters I'm going to work on. And then when it's, when I see a girl I really like, I'm just going to drop it all. And my intention is to just go over and flow with her. Right? So if you look at a professional sports team, let's say a professional NFL team, how much time do they spend practicing so they can surrender when they play? Okay, so they're both elements are there, but when it's game time, when you're actually f having fun, don't sit there and stop and go back and analyze this. Think about what you have to do. Pick one thing. Maybe you need to work on one of these skill sets. You can go out and do that. You can say, you know what? I need to work on close listening a lot. That's one I'm, I'm not good at. So I'm gonna go out today, I'm gonna talk to 10 people and really listen to them. You know what? I'm gonna work on, I, I really feel like I need to create a sense of shared risk together. How could I do that? What would that look like? Maybe I can, maybe I can s start to say stuff like, uh, I'll start to do a yes and set where I start to pull her into it so she's having to be part of the character. She's taking risks like me. Like I'll talk about the, the golden painted elephant and I'll be like, oh, it's so much fun to ride the golden painted elephant. You know what, I'm gonna stick you on the back in a bikini and you're gonna, you're gonna hold on to me, you're, you know, and, you're gonna, and you're gonna be my cheerleader while we race you know, in the elephant races, whatever. You see what I mean? And now she's part of it too. She's like, oh my God, I wouldn't do that. And I'm like, no, we're gonna put you in a bikini just like uh, Princess Leia in Star Wars. It'll be super sexy. You know that, that one with the swirly boobs? And she'll laugh and now she's feeling, instead of you entertaining her, you're both taking a shared risk, you're playing together. 
that would be an example, okay? But you can go through this, look at this, and stuff like that. But I want to present another idea, other ways to look at it, but I did want to present this idea to you so you guys have it.